Hi friends, welcome. I'm back with another book review, Connoisseur Kids. Before I get into it, I just want to wish everybody a happy summer or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, happy winter. Connoisseur Kids is a book about etiquette, manners, and living well for parents and their little ones. It was written by Jennifer L. Scott. She is the best-selling author of the Madame Chic series. Connoisseur Kids, it's all about creating kids who are experts in etiquette, manners, and living well, or at least striving to be experts or efficient in those realms, if that makes sense. I hope so. <laughs> etiquette, what is it? This is a brief blurb that she wrote from the book. Etiquette is polite behavior. It's how we act in front of people and also by ourselves. Etiquette is very important. Can you imagine a world without etiquette? Having no rules might sound fun at first, kind of like one big party. But think about it. A world with no rules and no manners would be a very unpleasant place to live. I agree. Chapter one is about communication. She talks about eye contact, how important it is for a child to learn the skill of maintaining eye contact during a conversation, not being too intimidated when speaking to other people to not look at them, um, how important that is. It shows focus and she also has a game to help your child further their eye contact skills picture of the game. It's a very simple little game. Posture. What does posture say about a person? It can kind of convey confidence, how much confidence you have in yourself and how much of an effort you're willing to put into your presentation to another person. Um, let me just sit up a little bit while I speak about this, right? <laughs> Any benefits to posture? Here's her little picture for posture. A boy slouching and then a boy standing upright in a nice straight manner. Speaking clearly, she covers the importance of teaching your children to enunciate their, their words and speak clearly. Mumbling can be perceived in a certain way, plus it's just a hindrance to good communication, right? You don't want your children to constantly have to repeat themselves to the person they are speaking with because the person can't understand them. Saying please, something so basic, but sometimes we, even as adults, just forget to say please, right? We become lazy. So she covers the importance of saying please, and here's an example. Good manners would be, may I please have some ice cream? Bad manners, I want some ice cream. Um, yes, so very important skill for children to learn about and implement. On the flip side, saying thank you, also very important. She has a prompt for your child to make a gratitude list. She covers thank you notes, the importance of writing a good thank you note, and that's something that I have always struggled with. I need to really work on that. So this is a nice reminder for me too, as an adult. Thank you notes, the importance of that. Thank you with a smile. When you say thank you, say with a smile. Thank you, right? Instead of thank you. Clearly, <laughs> a smile is better. And then she does offer some crafts in this book as well. Watercolor card wrapping paper card and a dried flower card. So when your child does write a thank you note, they could create either a watercolor, dried flower, or wrapping paper card to make it extra personalized and beautiful. Saying you're welcome, super important. Oh, here's something else she talks about. How to interrupt someone politely. Is there a polite way to interrupt someone? Something to ponder. She does touch on that and a good handshake, the importance of a good handshake. Here are two children shaking hands and smiling. The importance of tidying your room, keeping your room clean. She says to start with a cheerful attitude, right? One does not need to have a sour attitude while they are picking up. Whistle while you work, right? Tidying your room. The best tip, other than having a cheerful attitude about cleaning your room, is to tidy by categories. Wise, wise advice. Categories of clothes, books, toys, papers, craft supplies. And then stating where those items belong. She has a challenge called A Place for Everything. A Place for Everything Challenge. Because kids love games, right? Do what you undo. This is a tip she has 
under tidying. Here's a tip that will keep the mess in your house to a minimum. Always remember to do what you undo. What does she mean by that? If you take the scissors out, put the scissors back. If you open the door, close the door, right? If we put things back in their home, we don't have a mess in our house. She offers the tip of donating what you don't need, minimalizing your inventory to keep track of, right? <laughs> Tidying the bathroom, she has tips for that. Ooh, and she even has a nice spray um, that one can make, a wholesome spray. Distilled white vinegar, water, and lavender essential oil. This is a pretty common um, solution that a lot of us probably know how to make. I make one for my kitchen, the similar ingredients list, but this is child friendly. Let's skip on hygiene and grooming, chapter five. Parents, the goals in this chapter are to learn about proper hygiene and grooming, practice good hygiene on a daily basis, and enjoy taking care of the body through good hygiene and grooming. Taking care of your skin, how to do that. She talks about the importance of drinking water. Yes, so important. Um, something that I have purchased is a large glass quart mason jar, beautiful glass, and it has a nice stand. I'm going to soon set it up on my counter and add herbs and fruit to it just to kind of lure my children into drinking more water. If I leave it out and make it look pretty, they'll probably be enticed to drink more water, something we're working on. If you have a child who is five to eight years old, he should be drinking seven glasses of water a day. So yes. Taking care of your teeth, she discusses the importance of that and how different foods affect your teeth for the better or worse. Hygiene for colds. Cleaning your nails. Taking care of your hair. Especially important if you have longer hair that's not quite so easy to maintain. She has a recipe for DIY hair gel, so cool. Um, and I won't share that recipe. I will let you buy the book and read that recipe for yourself. But, um, so fun. Five easy hairstyles for long hair. She discusses some of those. Um, she has a side braid, braided half back, low pony flip, half bun, French braids. I'm always looking for new hairstyles. My daughter enjoys my doing her hair as well. So maybe if you have a daughter, you could try some of these hairstyles. Getting dressed. Jennifer L. Scott, I watch her YouTube channel. I'm a big fan. Jennifer, if you happen to watch this, big fan of yours. Um, she has... Jennifer has a system called a capsule wardrobe, a 10 item capsule wardrobe. I've heard of this before, but I haven't implemented it myself. Basic premise is to pare down your wardrobe and have items that you really enjoy that are in good condition so it makes getting dressed easily. I'm assuming she has um, a similar system for younger children. Two ways to fold a shirt, a t-shirt, she gives those instructions. How to mend a tear. Important life skills, right? Homemade stain remover, so awesome. Only three basic household ingredients as well. Daily dressing motivation, let me redo this. Why should we bother to get dressed every day? Why can't we stay in our pajamas all day long? After all, they're so comfortable. When you get dressed for the day, you are making yourself ready for whatever comes. Yes, and I've heard different people state the same thing. Get dressed for the day. Fly Lady likes to say, if you've heard of her, get dressed to lace up shoes. Be ready to go, right? <laughs> Here's a poem that Jennifer might have written. My mother told me to get dressed. I went to my closet and am stressed. I have no idea what I will wear. There's too much to choose from. I'm in despair. I have nothing to wear, Mom, I confessed. She said, darling, you must still get dressed. Don't know who wrote that, but fun little poem. Yes, even if we have nothing to wear or our children have nothing to wear, we must find something. So why not think ahead and manage our inventory, our closets, so it's not a challenge to find clothes, right? She has a, a fun chapter on health and a few recipes in this chapter. It's chapter six, blueberry frozen yogurt pops, banana ice cream. Oh, I make this one a lot. This is a classic. Just two um, frozen bananas. Lots of different books and sources talk about how to make banana ice cream. Chocolate dipped strawberries. Get your children to eat more fruit by dipping the fruit in chocolate, right? 
Why not? Life is for living, right? It's not bad to have chocolate once in a while. Baked apples, yummy. We are getting to the fall season. And she has a tip. Never eat on the go. When she spent time with um, Madame Chic in France, she picked up on the tip of never really snacking. You sit down for your meals and make them formal affairs and it helps you kind of maintain control over what you are consuming. Although it's a little, a little different with children because they, they oftentimes need to be snacking more than adults, but she says, never eat on the go. Always make sure you are seated properly at a table when eating food. If you eat on the go while walking or in the car, you are more likely to eat more beyond when you are naturally full. Very true, but again, you know, children are sometimes able to bend that because they're so darn active, right? And they need the calories. <laughs> but good tip for, for older children, right? Talks about exercise and she even has recipes in the back for entertainment and relaxation in the back of the book. Homemade Play-Doh, right? This must be a good recipe. I've seen lots of these recipes before, but I imagine this is a great one. Homemade Play-Doh, water, salt, vegetable oil, cream of tartar, all-purpose flour and food coloring. And if you want the proportions, get the book, right? And she has some ideas for good old-fashioned home, home fun. Make the world's longest hopscotch board, play restaurant, go swimming, plant a window box, take the dog on a walk. Lots of fun ideas, a very extensive list here. If you're looking for ways to get your child away from a screen, right? She has a recipe for basic slime and fluffy slime. DIY bath bombs, oh my, my children love bath bombs, do yours? And she has more games, dance chain, the oinking game, the laughing game, so fun. So, amazing book. We still have some time left in the summer, so if you're kind of looking for something to integrate into your summer days, pick this up. I got mine from Amazon. Um, right, wonderful book. We're enjoying it so far. And if you stayed with me to the end, I thank you for watching this. I invite you to subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful, blessed day. Bye-bye.